Hello again. Welcome to PHE, Physical and Health Education. Today we'll be talking about it on the topic, we'll be dwelling on the topic, pathogens, pathogens, diseases and their prevention. I'll take it one more time. Pathogens, diseases and their pre prevention. Now, what are the highlights of today's topic? We are going to be talking, uh, we'll be going to be focusing on the introduction to it's a very broad topic, if I might say, if I might add, because um, topics that have to do with uh, that are health or medically inclined are a bit uh, broad in the scope they cover. So we'll cover, we'll just dwell on a part of it as, as it uh, has to do with uh, pathogens, diseases and their preventions. So we'll be dwelling on the introduction and we'll be focusing on communicable diseases. So we are specific on communicable disease today, not the other uh, part of it, only on communicable disease. Like I say, it's quite a broad and lengthy subject to deal with. Now, uh, to topic rather, topic to deal with. Now the next part, part three, we'll be looking at classification of communicable disease. Classification of communicable disease, how they are classified. And then the final part will be looking at the prevention, the prevention of communicable disease. Now let's start, get started. Pathogens are microorganisms that are capable of causing infectious diseases in the body. Those diseases that ravages our body every now and then, they are led by microorganisms. Now these microorganisms come in different variations. Example of some of the pathogens are bacteria, fungi, viruses, worms, proto worm, actually worms are part of a parasite, so we can put them under parasites, protozoas, and so on and so forth. Now, diseases means illness. Now, this is the definition of diseases. diseases. Disease means illness of the body or general disorder of the body and mind. We must not mistake uh, sickness for illness. Illness is a prolonged length of time by which one is sick. Sickness is the effect of uh, a microorganisms in the life of somebody, in the body of somebody. Those tiny monsters inside us that are eating us from the inside out, those are microorganisms. Pathogen pathogenic diseases are diseases caused by these microorganisms. So all those things that happen in your body, you're having the different kind of uh, infectious diseases that we will be talking some of them here. These are led by these microorganisms and these are under the pathogens. Hence why we always need, when it talks about infectious disease, we need someone who studies infectious disease. We call them a pathology because of the pathogens, the word pathogens. Now let's see the next part of this. The disease malaria is caused by plasmodium which is uh, brought by or delivered to us by the Anopheles mosquito. Then we have measles, which is caused by mobili virus, gonorrhea, caused by gonococcus bacteria, sleeping sickness, caused by trypanosoma, typhus fever, is caused by the rickettsia bacteria, right there. Then pathogens, you must understand that pathogens are found almost everywhere in our ecosystem, in the air, in the water, soil, dust, animals, food, and so on. Therefore, it is important that they are to be avoided. And if you follow the advice of medical practitioners, they will tell you to avoid eating some food or taking some vegetables or fruits without, without uh, avoid eating it if you are not going to properly boil them. There's a specific temperature that all living organisms die of. These are living organisms. How be it they are microorganisms. But they are living. They can be alive inside of you. I used to like to watch a program known as Monsters Inside Me. Now, the monster inside me, they, talks about, they talk about things like this that are found wherever they are airborne or from dust particles or from soil particles they tend to transform and it escalates, even working to the point of disrupting our immune system. Now, naturally, they may not really, really destroy or kill you straightforward. 
the microorganisms uh, for, uh, uh, we are talking about, they may not kill you straightforward. But by the time they keep making your immune system very busy, the stronger viruses or bacteria, when they attack or ravage your body, they tend to put you down for good. That's why you don't need many things attacking you at the same time. If your if your body or your immune system, that's what I'm looking for. If your immune system is healthy and focusing on one, one particular infection, it tends to deal with it very fast. But when it's multiple infections, spells trouble or spells doom for you. That's why when the COVID-19 infection uh, came around along, we found for a way to take it up because imagine having a COVID-19 and a malaria infection all at the same time. Hence why they said immune system was the key to disrupting the power of the COVID-19, the coronavirus that came to ravage our world in 2020. Communicable disease. What are communicable diseases? Communicable diseases are those diseases that can be spread from one person to another. It is caused by the entry of germs, which are pathogens, into the body. And there are different kinds of communicable diseases. This is not to be com confused with the non-communicable disease. So if there are any types of the, uh, pathogens, we have the communicable disease and the non-communicable diseases. Of course, that which can be spread from one person to another and is called, known as communicable disease. From the word communication, you are meeting somebody, your communion, you are communion with somebody. So your is a close proximity, is a is a proximity uh, disease that is passed. Now that which can be um, passed through a communication channel, there are some that don't even need you to uh, don't, doesn't need um, a host to pass it to you or uh, someone else to spread it to you. Those are non-communicable diseases. So what are the classification of the communicable diseases? We have the following. We have communicable diseases that can be classified into four categories, which are airborne diseases. And under the airborne diseases, we have the common code, diphtheria. Now, I'll focus on diphtheria because diphtheria is the one that is like the newest in the town. It's the one that is disrupting a lot of people in this part of the spiral of our, of our um, planet. In the, in the, for the past six to ten months, let us say over a year now, and the African continent have been dealing, or the West African continent region have been dealing with diphtheria of late. In fact, we've recorded some few cases in Nigeria and even some death. And these are uh, mostly targeted at our young ones, the children. So it's important we start to take precautionary measures against the sickness diphtheria. We also have influenza. Before the coming in of COVID-19, this was the ravager of our world. This disrupted and killed over 60 million people between the early and the late, early, the early or the, and the mid 20th century. Influenza, otherwise known, the short form we call it these days, we call it as flu, influenza. We also have measles. We have pneumonia, another disruptive uh, di um, disease, tuberculosis, the one that is spread by coughing, whooping cough, etc. Now, these are under the airborne disease. All of them are carried from the air. Thus, why face masks, or you can also add our good friend, the one that has left us, or probably is still with us, but it has been contained, COVID-19, as part of these airborne diseases. We have the next... Uh, category which is food and waterborne diseases. Food and waterborne diseases. We have cholera, we have diarrhea, eating of all those old food, old meat, for spoils food, food that your body does not accept, contaminated food or water, diarrhea. This century, same hepatitis. We have the different classification of hepatitis. We have the worms, we have the salmonella which is food poisoning caused by different kinds of sources, which I'm not here to list out. We have the poliomyelitis, myelitis, poliomyelitis. Then from the aspect of our insects, or I love to call them, I love to call them parasites, since they disturb us so much. 
insert slash vector. Now, one of the things we know for vector as a vector uh, uh, organism is mosquito. The problem we have in this region, mosquito, killer of 600, some 600,000 people in the world every year. In, sorry, in Africa alone, every year. 600,000 people. World over, it kills up to 3 million people. The mosquito. So, insect slash vector borne diseases. We have malaria, that's the one that kills a lot. Malaria, we have sleeping sickness, trypanosomiasis. Trap, we have the yellow fever. We have the Lassa fever, the rabies, uh, filariasis, and scabies. Otherwise, we call it in our local palace as cro cro. Those of you that have it, these are led by or brought by insect and vector components or things that are organisms that are insects or vector. Now we have the final category which is the contact diseases. Contact diseases, these are the ones that are very contagious. We have number one, the gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. We have the leprosy, ringworm, syphilis, AIDS, or we do call it in the full terms, HIV AIDS, scabies and candidiasis now these diseases are contagious means it's contact it can be it can be passed upon contact with another person a or a sick person or someone who is infected with these diseases you must note every one of these diseases and what they function now, so, like I said earlier on, not everything was, good, so, uh, was going to be digested in this uh, series in today's sessions. But going forward, when we learn more about the blood and everything, we will see more sicknesses that we unfold. Some sicknesses that are passed from different kinds of flies, the butterfly larvae and the rest. The one that tends to bore hole into our head, the one that tends to, tend to bring us different sickness and diseases, you will see more about that. Now, prevention. Now, let's enter the last part of this topic, of our topic for today. Prevention of communicable disease. How can we prevent all these diseases that have been stated from affecting us? There are no easy ways. I must put that. Let me put the caveats out there. There are no easy ways on preventing. I mean, how can you prevent something that is airborne? Can you see the air? Can you see dust, particle? Even when you're scraping your soil, so you don't know what is flying to your nose. So there are no easy ways. But there are ways you can try to use to mitigate or minimize the effects. One, and there are eight ways that have been stated or will be brought here for us to know how to do it. Four of which are on your screen right now, which is nutrition, hygiene, water, environment. You will see the other four as we go on. Now let's talk about in nutrition. We'll talk about adequate or adequate nutrition. Adequate uh, nutrition. Eating a balanced diet will help the body to build immune system. The key thing here, the key word there is your immune system. That is your fighter. He is your soldier. He is the one that fights your wall that you cannot reach because your hand cannot reach inside your body. So you must boost your immune system so it can fight all these diseases head on. Now, why is your boost boosting it to fight your, uh, the diseases that are ravaging your body? It's, imper it's imperative that you do not enter a situation whereby you are caught with struggling with another disease because that way you will overwork your immune system and thus your immune system will work against you. The moment you overwork your immune system, your immune system tends to fight against you and cause several other uh, extenuating problems in your body. You have different kind of um, secondary issues to deal with from the primary issues. Now the second one is your personal hygiene. Cleanliness, they say, is next to godliness, but cleanliness is next to ha happiness. If you want to be happy in this life, you better be clean. Cleanliness of the body, of the hands, legs, teeth, hair, and fingernails is very important. So, of course, especially, let me focus on the fingernails. Yes, we are young, we are lively, we are, we, are, we are loud, we are playful, we go to dig the dirt, the dirt is under your fingernails, you try to wash it, but here is the catch, you must use... A nail, a cutter, or a nail remover, the, the stuff you use inside your nail to remove dirt, to remove it properly. 
consume some of these um, death have stuck so deep in your hands that when you attach it to your eye or to your mouth or to scratch a broken skin, you tend to pass an infectious disease into your body or your blood system. Do not use any person's clothing, underwears, handkerchief, towels, blade, toothbrush, clippers, etc. Don't use anybody. In fact, get your own for everything. Everything. Even if it's your brother, it's your sister, your parent. Don't share. Else you will have some of these diseases. Even if um, I had a case yesterday, uh, one of uh, the parents I met, uh, she was a bit down with sickness. I won't call it sickness, of course. She, she, she decided that all her children would leave the house. That yesterday she was packing up, I was so surprised and I was so proud of her. She knew that that moment she's having a very infectious disease that is very communicable. Like you can communicate it one day, you can move it to the next person. She decided to remove all or pack her children's things, let them move to stay with her. Uh, her, her relatives. That is the smart move to make. Even if it's your, your child and your mother says, it's my daughter, let me keep her. Let her stay with me. If the, the, the disease that affects me affects her, no problem. It's still too, no, it's not right. When anybody is sick, it's best you stay away. In fact, she even had to go a long way to quarantine herself. She put herself in her room and locked herself. I was communicating with her from her room. Say, I'm not coming out to her to infect my children. What a wonderful mother. If all of us could take that way, if us children can also keep our distance when people are infected or use our own materials, keep personal hygiene very well, maybe perhaps we might just survive this fall. Environmental sanitation is number three. Keeping the immediate surrounding very clean and tidy is very important to prevent flies, mosquitoes and harmful insects, snakes and every other contaminant out there from coming in to contaminate our food, drink and even us straight away. Because somebody don't need to contaminate your food and drink. I mean, the snake, he doesn't need your food and drink. If you dare him, he's going to use your body as experiment. As a, he's a cocktail, he's a, a chemical composition to check his venom, whether he's strong or not. So please keep your immediate surrounding very clean. Remove overlapping things, jump, pack, jump packing things anyhow, just remove it one side. Also use portable water portable and safe water. That's the place of water. Your water system is important. Your water system is important. Drink clean water. These days we are having issue with our water system and the whole problem with our light issues and the petrol scarcity and everything that is happening in our country these days might lead you to go to take water from different sources, whether from streams or from rivers or anything. As long as it's not been vetted, it has not been vetted, please do not take it. Make sure the water you're using is classified. Even these days, the boiling of water that we are used to, we buy our water at this thing. Yes, I said it earlier on. All organisms die at a particular degree Celsius temperature. And I can give you that degree Celsius. Every organism dies at 100 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling power of the water. So when water is boiling, yes, it's believed. But there are some wicked stuff that knows how to shield themselves. I mean, how many of you know this as fun fact? Just a side note. How many of you know that if there is a problem, it is a nuclear bomb or the sun radiates its energy on us and release some energy or radi radiation, radiation poison on us? There's one animal, that, or there's one organism, or rather, uh, let me call it a, it's an insect, let me call it an insect, that will survive the fall. Cockroach. The cockroach have been known to survive nuclear bomb. They did an experiment, put it, it survived it. So all this stuff, people carry the nuclear bomb in themselves. So that's why you know, you should know how to keep your environment very clean. Because that's why you can also have nuclear bomb. It has some cocktails you do not need in your food and drink. Imagine cockroaches going to your food and drink. Wow. Prompts and routine medical checkup and treatment. You need the medical checkup. Go around, just look around for a minute. Just do it regularly, can do it within the space of one month and three months. Always go for regular checkup to minimize every problem in your body. Yes, let me tell you, I can beat my chest. I'm not the most, I'm not, a, I'm not a great doctor. I'm not the smartest doctor out there, even if I want to be. But I can say that every human being is working with one, one disease or the other. Every. There's always a disease your body is fighting at every given point in time. 
The truth of the matter is, do you or have you made positive moves to combat it before it escalates and become something tougher, something bigger, something stronger in your body, something harder to remove from your body? Every, med every medical problem can be stopped at the inception stage or the initial stage. But when it gets to enter the ravaging stage where it has become so strong in your body, the possibility of minimizing the effects might be very, very low or slim. So it's important to check, to go for checkups and treatments regularly and as much as you can. Immunization. The number six point is immunization. Every child should be immunized according to the specified time and age. This helps to prevent children from killer diseases, especially specific diseases. For example, we just had the COVID-19 and they said, if they say there's an immunization, there's a vaccine out there, please ensure you take your jab so you can help yourself combat if there's any ravaging disease in your body or any disease that wants to come in. You already, you're immunized. What it means is that your, con your, your immune system, hence the word immunization, is familiar with that signature. You know, like human beings, we all have our familiar signature. Every disease, have, every pathogen has his, it's not his, they're not human beings, its own signature. So when your immune system knows that one, it will be like, ah, this is malaria, I know malaria very well, this is him. Oh, yellow fever, you've come, get out of here. You will know which one to deal with based on their signature. The next one is ventilation, the seventh one. Let your area, your living uh, apartment, your living uh, environment, let it be well ventilated. Having good channel from air, be well ventilated and serene, uh, fumigated against every disease or any um, parasite out there. And also have good um, a ventilation system that will bring in the air from the outside in. Because you need the outside wind to help you serenate your, your, your room, your room, and also you can even have some air conditioning system to help regulate the temperature in your apartment or your room. Finally, health education. Health education, reading of books, reading good books, journals, and other materials, resources that will improve you and give you information is a very good way to help you live with awareness. If you're not aware, you'll be taking unawares. So you must, your awareness must be high and studying, increasing your, your moral compass, increasing your, your knowledge is a key way by which you can know how to deal with some of these issues. Not everything I've stated, stated here is, is a guarantee or is, is, um, uh, will give you the result, the desired result. But by the time you do what you call self-learning, you might have what you call self-actualization on how to deal with all these problems. So ensure you keep yourself in the know based on your health ground. Now to answer this question, let me just leave this for you to answer, take home for you, or just do at home as you're there. Which of the following is true regarding communicable diseases? A, is it they are all mild and only last for a few days? B, they are all severe and last for a lifetime? C, they, they range from mild to severe? Or D, they are unpredictable? In the, in the symptoms they will cause from someone or something else. I'll take that again for the D. They are unpredictable in the, in the symptoms they will cause from someone or something else. Which of those options are true regarding communicable disease? There's a second one for that. Why traveling outside? Now, this was a... Um, something um, recorded by a friend of mine called Toby. Mr. Toby was traveling outside. He's a chef, he's a sous chef, uh, chef, so he was going for a training. So why travel outside the States? Toby developed a communicable disease after eating some pork in an indoor restaurant. Why do you think this happened? A, the pork was not from the United States. The pork was not from the country, the United States of America. B, the pork was affected by an airborne disease. C. The pork was not completely cooked or cooked properly. Let me, use, let me rearrange the word. The pork was not cooked properly. 
then D, none of the answers are correct. Toby must have gotten the disease from someone or something else. So why do you think he was affected by the pork meat that he ate outdoors in a different restaurant? So um, why is your answer to this question? Let's just answer one of the questions from our past year to see to see our readiness to take up or take up the challenge in our external examinations. Now, let's focus on the year 2021, question number 50. It talks about non-communicable disease, of course, but we know about communicable disease. So if we know about communicable disease, one of these is not a communicable disease. You say, which of the following is a non-communicable disease. Which of the following is a non-communicable disease? Now, out of the diseases that we are listed, one of these is not a communicable disease. Now, A, they say cholera. B, malaria. C, measles. V, smallpox, and E, tuberculosis. If you remember carefully, we highlighted the airborne. We talked about the food and water bone. We talked about the insect and vector bone. And we also talked about the contact, contact diseases. At no place in that whole um, slide we had, was smallpox shown. There was cholera there. There was malaria, there was measles, there was tuberculosis, but smallpox was not there. So naturally, you just know smallpox is a non-communicable disease. So your answer there is D. I hope this time you will understand what your health is all about. Maybe next time we will talk about smallpox and the non-communicable diseases. Till next time, take care of yourself and have a wonderful day. <laughs>